Pakistan is the only country created in the name of Islam, but this so-called land of the pure is plagued by corruption that's brought it to the brink of collapse. Election night in Pakistan. The elated supporters of the victorious new Prime Minister, Nawaz Sharif, celebrate his crushing two-thirds majority. <laughs> Sharif says his victory is a mandate for change. But since the end of army rule, every elected leader, including Sharif, has been sacked on the same grounds of corruption and mismanagement. To many, this election was just a revolving door, ushering in familiar faces, all tainted with the same culture of corruption. The present ruling elite is, is just not in a position to raise sufficient resources uh, to run the state anymore. Uh, and that includes uh, the 30% of the budget that goes to the army. Um, the tax base is less than 1%, uh, and uh, the elite itself uh, rips off uh, huge amounts of money for itself through corruption. Um, it's not prepared to correct itself. Um, and instead, it's, it's, it's taxing uh, the, the common man, which is raising uh, very severe their problems. This is where the corruption starts, the rural heartland, dominated by feudal chiefs with large agricultural holdings. The landlord's assets bring them large amounts of money that they pay only 1% tax. From this power base, many so-called feudals enter politics and the cycle of corruption begins. This clan of several families has been relegated to almost biblical poverty. Little clean water, no sanitation, and now, no livelihood. Relatives of President Lagari himself kicked them off fertile fields their forebears had farmed for centuries. The land they've been given is salty and useless, their lives are ruined, and there's nothing they can do about it. Many politicians take the same attitude to national resources when they enter politics, grabbing whatever they can. This corruption is one of the main reasons people don't vote anymore. Less than a third turned out for the election, and even those figures are questionable. There hasn't been a census in Pakistan since 1981. Millions have moved, the population has increased. The government simply doesn't know how many people there are or who is where. In this town, people couldn't vote. Their would-be MP was killed in a bomb blast, the result of religious rivalry, Sunni versus Shiite. His deputy, Maulana Tariq, narrowly escaped death in the same attack. He now controls this radical Muslim group, Sipah-e-Sahaba. Tapping the frustrations of hard-pressed families, this movement is far closer to the daily lives of these people than the corrupt politicians they rarely see. Maulana Tariq uses Friday prayers to attack his enemies, the Shiites, who crippled him, and the government. <laughs> Women listen from the nearby rooftops, unable to join the men, not wanting to be seen. This nest of militant fundamentalism is an armed colony in the middle of grassroots Pakistan. Security is tight as his restive guards fear another attack on his life. While his focus is fighting Shiites, he also condemns official corruption and questions the validity of Sharif's victory when so many didn't vote. Uh, 
With the successive failure of governments to deal with corruption, any promises of a new government are viewed with suspicion. Fundamentalist groups such as these offer a moral high ground, even more attractive if you're living in the depths of poverty. The discontent on the streets is exacerbated by the country's worsening economic plight. In the past year, prices for food, fuel and clothes have doubled. And with a massive $29 billion in foreign debt, the country is close to bankruptcy. Well, I think the most serious crisis will be uh, the danger of defaulting on uh, Pakistan's foreign debt. Um, and if Pakistan does that, I don't see any kind of bailout, either from the IMF or from the Western countries. Uh, that would lead to a huge economic uh, catastrophe here. Uh, industry would virtually shut down, rising prices, public discontent would grow. The new Prime Minister claims his government has the answers. This party, which has been give, given a very big mandate by the people, now must address the problems of the country. The economy is number one. Of course, unemployment is number two. Corruption is number three. Accountability, corruption. And then a lot of other issues. And uh, I think by providing good governance, honest, clean government, we should be able to uh, solve the problems of the country if uh, we are really committed to the uh, to the to the uh, to the problems that are there, and we really want to uh, solve them. We should be able to solve them because uh, with this mandate, if we don't uh, produce results, if we don't deliver, of course they'll be very disappointed. And what could happen? I must ask you, given the history in Pakistan, what could happen to the country if you fail? They might lose faith in democracy. They might lose confidence in democracy, and that will not be a good thing. If Nawaz fails and there is, uh, a, say, an economic failure or, or, or some kind of economic crash, um, I think these uh, parties and these movements in the provinces will take off in a very big way. Uh, they, they, their justification that the centre is corrupt and cannot hold together, um, that the political leadership at the centre has failed the country, all the arguments that they're presenting now and the religious parties will be saying the same, that these uh, corrupt feudal politicians have uh, let down Pakistan, as it were, um, you will get uh, uh, these, the, these ethnic parties and Islamic parties, uh, they, they will find a justification, I think, from any kind of serious uh, future crisis. <laughs> In the cities, groups such as Jamaat-e-Islami see the new Prime Minister as merely another symbol of a rotten system. Having boycotted this election, this fundamentalist Islamic group sees the growing discontent on the streets as its power base. We will not recognize the government as legitimate because of the corrupt system. But we will not come to the streets immediately. We will organize the people. We will look for our chance. And when the people become restive and they want a change, we will give voice to the sentiments of the people. Although not electorally popular, they do have the moral authority to order street action and national strikes. They organized a boycott of the capital recently that was one of the last straws for then leader Benazir Bhutto. In this show of their strength, they're protesting in support of Kashmir's Muslims. They are staunch backers of Pakistan's militant involvement in South Asia's most volatile flashpoint, Kashmir. And in this they could find a powerful ally. On this border crossing between India and Pakistan, a bizarre ceremony mirrors the tension between the two uneasy neighbours. A reminder of the absolute power the military used to hold in this country. Compared with the past, the Pakistani military is now rarely seen. They do not flaunt their power openly. But Pakistan's former rulers are watching from the wings. Behind the scenes, powerful former military chiefs have quietly formed their own political movement, a party that seeks accountability of corrupt MPs. The entire establishment had turned corrupt. 
it is still corrupt, we have to see how it behaves in the future. And so no matter which government is in place, the nation must express itself between the elections through the pressure groups. The founder and leader of the Accountability Party is General Hamid Gul, a former chief of intelligence. This is the last chance that democracy is getting in Pakistan, in my view. And uh, one cannot pr precisely predict what might happen, but I think the worst is going to happen. The country may well plunge into a catastrophic-like turmoil, uh, which uh, could rend the society asunder. Is there potential for an Islamic revolution then in Pakistan? Ever since the creation of Pakistan, on all three sides of it there have been revolutions. In China in 1949, in um, Afghanistan and in Iran in 1978. So uh, Pakistan is naturally influenced by the outcome of those revolutions. Besides if the economic collapse and if the failure of the governance, if the failure of democracy, they come together, then people of Pakistan are so sick and fed up with the system that they are bound to rise against it. Many liberals doubt the possibility of an Islamic rise, but there are already signs of a growing link between the army and Islamic groups looking for a more pure form of government. After years of corruption and economic mismanagement, Pakistani democracy is on the brink. If this government falters, the people may be willing to try anything just to keep their country together.